This video is sponsored by Neural DSP. All of the tones that you hear are courtesy of the Archetype Rabia plugin. Download a free pack of my presets and a free trial of the plugin via the links in the description box. Technique lessons are something that I've shied away from teaching over the years and I think that's because I've never really felt like I was a specialist in any one guitar technique, be it picking, legato, sweeping, tapping, you name it. I can do all of those things to a certain extent, but I've never felt like a true master of any one technique. That being said, I do want to talk to you about legato. In my practice this week, I've found myself developing some fun lines that use legato and hybrid picking somewhat in the vein of Tom Quayle. And to be honest, I kind of surprised myself with what I was able to come up with. Despite not having really worked on the technique for a few years, I found that the muscle memory that I had developed from practicing Tom Quayle exercises on a daily basis back when I was studying music at uni years ago, it was still there and I could feel it getting stronger as the days went by. Now, if you don't know who Tom Quayle is, he is, in my opinion, one of the very best online guitar and music educators out there today. His knowledge of the instrument, the fretboard, and of music theory and its application is just incredible. And you can learn so much, even just from the free content that he offers on YouTube. Now, he also happens to be a true master of the legato technique and seems to just effortlessly blaze up and down the fretboard with unbelievably fluid and interesting lines. So today I wanted to talk about how I learned legato from watching his lessons and how I built up the muscle memory that allowed me to confidently play lines like the one you heard at the start of the video. And by the way, if you want the tab for that lick plus several legato exercises to practice once you're done with this lesson, click the link in the description box to gain access to all of that for free. Yes, that's right, for free. Let's start with what legato is. It's basically a combination of techniques that we all know and use every day, namely hammer-ons, pull-offs, and slides. When you play a phrase using legato, you don't pick every note. You'll maybe pick the first note on a string and then use hammer-ons, pull-offs, and slides to play the next few notes and then pick another when you change string and again, use the aforementioned techniques to play the following notes. On notation and tab, this would be indicated with a slur, which is a curved line connecting a string of notes together. For example, I'm gonna play the same three note per string exercise with alternate picking versus legato so that you can see and hear the difference that it makes. One, two, three, four. <laughs> If I play the legato version again, pay close attention to my picking hand and observe how I only pick the first note on each string. For the first note on the D string, I'm using the pick. For the first note on the G string, I'm using my middle finger to gently pluck that string. I'm not going for a twangy country chicken picked sound where that note really pops out. I'm just gently plucking the string to get a nice, even and fluid sound. The sound I'm trying to achieve here is a very soft, fluid sound that almost sounds as if I'm not even changing string. This is how Tom Quayle approaches his legato technique. He's really using a combination of pick and fingers for the few notes that he picks or plucks. So technically hybrid picking is a part of his legato dominated sound. And that use of the middle finger to pluck strings is clever for a couple of reasons. One is that it minimizes the movement of the picking hand. For example, if I was to use the pick for the first notes on both strings, look at the movement I have to make with my picking hand. <laughs> It is a small movement when I move over to the G string and then back to the D, but it is still movement that I don't have to make if I instead use the middle finger to pluck the note on the G string since it's hovering over that string anyway. So look at the difference in movement there if I use the pick for both strings. versus pick and middle finger for the G string. So 
So using the middle finger in combination with the pick is definitely a more ergonomic approach to take versus only using the pick. The other reason that it's clever is legato is supposed to sound fluid. When I'm playing with legato, I want all of the notes to sound as even as possible, dynamically speaking. If I'm playing a particularly long line, like the one I played at the start of the video, which was something like this. Now that lick definitely still needs some work. It's still something that I'm practicing, trying to get used to using legato again, but the point is I don't want any of those notes to jump out. I'm not trying to place accents on any of them. I want them to all be played as evenly as possible. And using the finger to softly pluck the strings allows me to achieve that, especially when I'm crossing strings. Hey everyone, we're gonna get back to the lesson very soon, but I just wanna take a chance to give a shout out to today's video sponsor, Neural DSP. For all of the tones that you're hearing in this video, I've been using their Archetype Rabia plugin, which is of course Rabia Massad's signature plugin. And I recently filmed a full demonstration of this plugin, so you can find that elsewhere on my channel. Like all Neural DSP plugins, this one is jam-packed with features. You've got three amps, two cabs, six microphones per side, you can load in your own IRs, there are room microphones, four pre-effects pedals, including a compressor, octaver, fuzz, and overdrive. In fact, those last three are actually two pedals and one, if you can believe it. So you get two octaves, two fuzz pedals, and two overdrives to play with. And unique to Rabia Massad's signature plugin, this is something that you don't get in any other Neural DSP plugins, is the mono synth. Now this gets its own page in the plugin, and it's a lot of fun to play with. And I'm saying that as someone who definitely wouldn't naturally gravitate towards an effect like a guitar synth sound, but it is generally loads of fun to play with. Post effects include incredibly versatile delay and reverb algorithms. You've got a parametric EQ, noise gate, a transpose tool so you can tune down without actually having to physically tune down your guitar. And you also get a feature called the doubler control, which when you're playing rhythm parts, dials in this really nice stereo spread. It's like you're double tracking in real time. On top of that, you get a very useful metronome to practice with and an onboard tuner as well. Today, I'm giving you my preset pack for Archetype Rabia. For free, it contains all of the presets that I used in my demonstration video when the plugin was released. And it also includes the preset that I'm using for this specific video, which is called Squishy Lead. So that can all be downloaded for free along with a trial of the plugin via the links in the description box. Thank you to Neural DSP for sponsoring another video on the channel and let's get back to the lesson. So I want you to try out the three note per string exercise that I played earlier on in the video. I want you to try it yourself now. I want you to pick the first note on the D string with the pick and pluck the first note on the G string with your middle finger. And you want to use 16th notes for this, not triplets. The reason being is that when you're dealing with three note per string shapes, Guitarists have a tendency to only play triplets because it, it just feels natural given that you're playing three notes on one string and three on the next, you know, rhythmically triplets just come naturally. And they are absolutely valid. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with triplets, but playing this three note per string exercise with 16th notes or even eighth notes, it forces you to get better at what I just described with regards to the use of the finger to pluck notes when crossing strings, which will achieve that even fluid legato sound. This is actually one of the key exercises that I used to practice on a daily basis that helped me build up a lot of the muscle memory that I have for playing legato based lines that I'm now trying to revive. And I learned this exercise from Tom Quayle's, I think it was Modern Legato One, that online course that he has. So check that out on his website. So I'm gonna play it with you to a click track. You'll hear a two bar counting, so that's eight beats in total. And then we'll play around it constantly and remember that you're picking the D string and plucking the G string each time. So here we go. I'll show you another exercise you can practice that involves a technique we haven't yet looked at, and that's slides. So you can use slides in legato-based lines to make position changes on the fretboard. For example, in this exercise, you'll see me execute a position change on the D string by playing an ascending slide with my index finger.
Let's look at the first part of that exercise before the position change occurs. Now this one does use triplets as opposed to straight eighth or sixteenth notes. And I'm plucking the first note on the G string with my middle finger. And the rest are hammer-ons and pull-offs. And then I'm picking the first note on the D string. Now that in itself could be a little mini exercise that would be worth drilling in your technique practice as well. But let's continue that to see how the position change is played. So after I've picked that first note on the D string, I play another four notes on that same string but without picking again. And the first of those four notes comes with a pull off. Then I slide up two frets for the next note, hammer on with my middle finger, and then another hammer on with my third finger. Look at how little my, my picking hand is moving there. There are only three notes left in this exercise, one of which is on the G string, which I pick with the pick. And then the two final notes on the B string, the first of which I pluck with the middle finger and then I hammer onto the last note. So let's try that together now. Again, you're plucking the first note on the G string, picking the first note on the D string, then using pull-offs, slides, and hammer-ons for the remaining notes on that string. Then you cross over to the G string, and then pluck the B string and hammer-on for the final two notes. Again, you're gonna hear a two-bar count in before we start. And by the way, at the end of the exercise, I'm gonna leave a two-beat gap before starting again just to allow us both to reset and get the middle finger back to the G string in time. So here we go. Like I said earlier, if you want the tab for the intro lick plus a series of legato based exercises that when practiced daily, will build the muscle memory you need in order to confidently start using legato in your lead playing, click the link in the description box to get all of that for free. Please like and subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.